13, 14, 15, Falls 16, counting. 18, 19, 20. I just realised I don't think there's any P's in numbers in no the P's way in numbers. in the way they're spelt out. I was just trying to work out whether there are. Oh, such simple things. 1,473, 9,642,392. I don't think there's any P's in numbers. And reset. <laughs> oh, there's a random sort of day in the Richard and Paul household where Paul just okay. comes up with something bizarre. It's yeah. okay, you're having an assessment next week. <laughs> <laughs> so bloody, bloody, bloody welcome. Yeah. Welcome to the show, which is called Sunday Chat. Yes, thank you for joining us here on our cosy sofa here in West London, UK, Great Britain, the world. Europe. Not in Europe. Great Britain. We're not in Europe. No, Paul. we are in Europe. We're not in the European Union. No. We are part of Europe. Well, some would. Beg to differ, absolutely. Paul, they now, would. The whole passport thing, and they'd be wrong. The whole passport thing. Oh, I know. People being yeah. turned away from airports because they are being turned away from airports. Haven't got much left on the passport. Oh no, you have to have at least six months left on your passport um, remaining valid before you travel. Look, yeah, it's either valid passport. Or it isn't. Yeah, well, that's sort of true. That's it. But I think that was always the case. No, it's I... changed. The rules changed Has since it? Brexit. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find Paul. Anyway, welcome and happy bunny Easter Jesus egg thing. Christmas. Easter. Welcome to Easter. We're now officially in the Easter holidays <laughs> and um, yeah I mean Easter's a funny old thing isn't it really I mean I'm try I try my very best not to offend anybody with any Jesus jokes but <laughs> look Jesus is coming look busy yeah 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 um, but no. it is I, oh, I'm I am very it's I am joke. very grateful oh. for for this religion that has a God, because we get two extra days bank holiday. Thank you, Jesus. Yay! Praise be. And also at Christmas, we get two days we, at Christmas. We get two days at Christmas. One for religious reasons and one for gifting reasons. Charity reasons. Yeah. Charity yeah. reasons. So yeah, we get three extra days. No, I bank am holiday. very grateful. I mean, it's, the thing is about Easter, it's all a bit weird, isn't it, really? If you think about it, if you really, really, really think about it, because Easter's got its roots in paganism. Well, yeah, absolutely. Ostera, isn't it? Well, uh, uh, whatever it's called, Ostara, Uster, Uster. Um, whatever. Um, but it's got its roots in paganism, and also the date is determined by the moon. It is, yes. I, I mean, mean seven... Seven days after the first full moon after the equinox. Oh, that's, that's it, is how it? Easter I didn't is know that. Out. I've never sort of, yeah. Oh, right. So oh, you can't get more pagan than that, could you? Really? So oh. it, that's why it can be... Well, it can't land well, on no, the Passover. No, it can't be. Yes, it is. No, it can't be. Yes, seven it is. Days, uh, seven days after yes, it is. the full moon. Yes, it of, is. Oh, yes, it oh. is. Yes. So actually, if the full moon is on the 19th of April, it can be a very late Easter. It, yeah, and it can be up to the 25th of April, I think, something wow. like that. Yeah. So it can be from the 28th of... Oh, God, counting again, Paul. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, uh, numbers aren't my thing. Uh, <laughs> no, they're not. Well, I suppose if it's up to the 29th of April, it must it's be from the 29th. The 20th. The 25th, the 25th of April, I think, okay. something like that. Well, Anywho. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's, all, it's all a bit weird because you've got that and then you've got the commemoration of Jesus' crucifixion on the... Good Friday. Good Friday. But of course, it's not like Christmas. 
Well, no, he was born then. That's why. Well, yeah. No, well, he wasn't. I don't think. <laughs> well, no, so he wasn't. You'll find no. the scholars will disagree yeah. with that. But yes. Yeah. The, the, it's not like Christmas, as in Christmas, always fall, falls on the twenty fifth of December. Christmas does always fall on. The 25th I know, of December. but Easter doesn't always fall. Oh yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So if it's a commemorative date, oh. but of course they have to get the moon involved and they have to get other things involved, like Passover. Right. Easter yeah. can't fall on Passover. Is that when the blood of lambs were put on doors and things? Yeah, it's to do with the um, with Egypt, isn't it? And the plagues yeah. that were yeah. foisted upon Egypt. And I think it was the tenth plague, wasn't it? Don't that know. all the firstborn would die oh, that's as right. the angel yeah. of death went over. So the... The... Israel, Israelites. Israelites were told to put the mark of blood on the doors, on their doors. so that the angel of death would go, oh no, I won't do that one. <laughs> there's a in, mark of blood on the door. What, in a, in a Julie Walters voice? I won't pop. No, there's another one marked with blood. <laughs> I won't bother with that one. They got uh, away with it this time It round. is all bizarre, it, isn't well, it? Well, it is bizarre, but I mean, the whole thing is a very rich story. Story, whatever you want to say about religion, it's a very well woven, rich tapestry of a story, isn't it? And something also well woven what? is all of the Pope's garments for, for the special days and things. Yeah, isn't I mean, it? that's all a bit of a you faff, know. really. I mean, it's a man in a dress. <laughs> it's <laughs> some of that it's the hats and then it's the drag. big cakes. Religious and drag. Yeah. So, yeah, but I don't want to insult anybody. Why are you not insulting really anyone? Don't. No. I don't want to. I don't want anybody to feel as though they're No, because they have got no one. No. Um, <sighs> but, you know, you, everything in this world is game, frankly. Yeah, yeah. For the piss to get ripped out of it. But, you know, religion is very dear to many people and many people will be celebrating. But then Absolutely. you throw in... Easter bunnies. The Easter bunny. And eggs. With eggs. I mean, eggs going back to... Birth. A Sarah of and all of that. Yeah, get that. Um, Easter bunnies. Well, I think it was to do, and I've been doing a little bit of research on this. Do you mean Just, you've looked on Google? Oh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> that is the way we research nowadays. But no, they, they think it's to do with the proliferation of little bunnies being born at this time of year. Right. I was wondering whether it's actually down to the amount of hares that are out at this time of year, rather than bunnies. Rather than rabbits, I wondered whether it might be hares. But they're sweet little baby little rabbits. Well, I know they are, but I mean, it, it's the... Covered it's in the, chocolate. <laughs> it's, mm. the, it's hares that are really sort of, you know, active and prolific That's the at March the moment. March isn't well, it? Well, yeah, well, well, March, it's Easter, it's March, so there we are. I'm right, clearly, and there's no P in March hair either. There we are. Oh, yeah. Paul, there's yeah. a P in Paul, though. <laughs> <laughs> there's not a P go. in Paul. <laughs> So, yeah, the oh, whole Easter dear. thing, it's quite bizarre, really. And then, of course, you've got all these massive companies raking in all these profits from selling all these, yeah. selling all these goods, these chocolate goods that we all like to consume. I mean, that is going against all of those religious values, surely. I mean, oh, didn't I don't Jesus... Know overturn the tables of the money lenders in the place temple. where it was in the temple that's it <laughs> didn't he do that saying he this did. is bad yes. and all yeah. of this yet we yeah. still yeah buy into this commercialization of each religious festival and i've bought into it as well because i bought three large easter eggs at little they were two ninety nine uh, each, sorry, sorry. or three for two pounds. Large, large. That is a large Easter egg. <laughs> the box is about this big. That's not a large <laughs> Easter egg. Paul. It's a large Easter egg in commercial terms because it used to be this big, yeah. but shrinkflation has brought and it they used to have big. bows and oh, they did, yeah, and little, little 
what are they called? Things? <laughs> I think you're having the assessment. Chicks. Little chicks. Do you remember they? the little Easter eggs that had little icing chicks on them? No, I don't remember those. That you could just those. eat in one bite. No. Ooh. No. Yeah. But you know, it's ridiculous because I was I was looking, so what did that, that these were six pounds, so two pounds each. And I could have got you a big bar of chocolate for two pounds. Would that have been more chocolate in it weight? It would have been more chocolate well, in weight. Why didn't you buy me the bar? Because you went, I went to the Easter egg. I did. I went to the Easter egg. <laughs> Let me try and do that. I went to the Easter egg. <laughs> I went to the Easter egg. <laughs> yeah, there yeah, we are. I so think that I'll give you, you that could, one. And yeah. do you crack your, your eggs? Uh, that's a very personal question, Paul. <laughs> um, do uh, I crack my egg? I just eat it. Yeah, but do you do you do you crush it no. in it in no, it, or Paul. do you unwrap it? No, Paul. I try and fit the whole <laughs> thing in at once. <laughs> I think that's actually pretty true. Cadbury's cream eggs. Have you ever put a whole Cadbury's cream no, egg in your mouth? I wouldn't waste the deliciousness. <laughs> of a Cadbury's cream egg. That's Cadbury's cream eggs. I wouldn't waste it. It takes me three bites <laughs> to eat a uh, Cadbury's cream oh, egg. Dear. Top off, middle and bottom. Oh, so then you get the that, mat... that gunge oh, in the middle? You mean Disgusting. the fondant? It's not fondant, it's oh, just it is. clay sugar it's with colouring. It's disgusting. Fondant. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I seem to remember, though, that on those eggs, the chocolate is quite thick. Isn't it? Fairly thick, yeah. Yeah, it's a good bit of chocolate. Yeah. yeah. There we are. So why don't they make hollow chocolate eggs like that, without that... that? Because they can fill it with fondant. Oh, yeah. Anyway, let's move on. So that's Easter for you. Mm. But, you know, I think, going back to what I was saying before, I think that the Church of England is missing a trick, really. Because, you know, you've got all these companies making all this money, yet the Church of England is saying, oh, we're poor, we can't even fix the church roof. You know, they, But they've been saying that forever. But they, they could open a, a lovely gift shop. Selling chocolate eggs. Church of England. No. I think at Easter time they could do well, they could do a good range of chocolate eggs, but perhaps chocolate covered Jesus on a shortbread crucifix. <laughs> well, don't come for me on that one because you know full well hot cross buns are a depiction of the crucifix. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you all of course Everybody in the, eats them. and every communion. I don't think community, that's well, Roman Catholic, isn't Christ it? It's the body the of Christ, Christ and the blood, blood of Christ. Well, that's from the Last Supper, isn't it? It is, yeah. 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 I did see a really interesting, I think Michelle uh, posted it Michelle. on Planet Ven Vegetarian the, the other day, a really um, interesting painting of the Last Supper, but a very different one. I it's thought that was quite Maundy interesting. Maundy Thursday, isn't it? That? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I thought it was you quite see, interesting. I, I know a little bit about religion. I did do religious <coughs> studies at school, although I did spend most of the time not in the class. I went to public school, so we did divinity. Divinity. <laughs> to me, divinity <laughs> is tarot cards. <laughs> And room Divining. reading, yeah, isn't it yeah. really? Yeah. Anywho, anyway, yeah. let's move on yeah. and get on with the show. The Sunday chat. Oh, I've got a on nose. Easter Sunday. I've got a runny nose. Oh dear. Have you got a runny? I have nose? again because it's so bloody cold. Well, it is. You know, oh. in the daytime yesterday, I think it was about fifteen degrees. At night, it was five. And we're really sort of oh, we're swaying getting on to that from one to minute. another. Shush, now you're out of control. Yeah, I was just covering up your nose sniffing and prodding and things. Just yeah. shush now, Paul. We're coming up to the weather report. And for those of you who are new to our channel, Chanel, <laughs> I've 
<laughs> yeah. Nouveau pour le Chanel. Um, le Tom. Yeah, for those who are new to the channel, yeah. Carry on. Le Tom, uh, il fait beau. <laughs> <laughs> il fait beau. Il fait oh, beau. Oh, right, okay. I, well, you, just told, you just said it was cold. So C'est le foie. Il fait froid. Il fait froid. Il fait froid. Froid. <coughs> yeah, you need to get that. It's sort of, Richard and Paul's you know, weather report. <laughs> let me know something back in the road. C'est le uh, report, report de la Tom et le Paul et Richard. <laughs> Paul, what has the weather been like this week? Changeable. Changeable. It really has been very so. Changeable, we very have had days pool. of absolute torrential rain, <laughs> mornings of glorious sunshine, <laughs> afternoons of absolute greyness, and temperatures that, as I say, have sort of veered from like 15 degrees down to like 4 degrees, 5 degrees. So, I mean, on f Thursday, I think it was, I was at the plot. I went down to do some work and it just chucked it down and it was absolutely chucking it down as you'll see in a week at the plot. Then yesterday, Friday, um, it was rather sort of lovely and the sunshine was glorious. So I'm hoping that today, which we're filming Saturday, um, I'm hoping that the grass on the plot is going to be dry enough for me to stream because I really do need to get on and stream it. So, yeah, and I think it's going to continue being sort of wet and um, sort of unseasonably wet for the next week or so. Everybody's certainly. complaining about the rain. Well, I mean, there has been rather a lot. There, there has, has been rather a lot. We'll let you into a little secret. We did actually do a filming yesterday, but we had a technical hitch mm. and had to abandon filming. Mm. So for those of you watching my vlog going, oh, we're filming Sunday chat, da 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 um, we didn't manage to complete it, so we decided abandon that, do it on Saturday instead. After crumpets and marmite. Or we've had crumpets and marmite mm. this morning. Yum, 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 yum. Lovely. So I got wet in the week. Did you? Yes, I bloody well did. Oh, I know. Oh, poor I you. Couldn't go on. I was dripping, my coat was dripping wet. <laughs> Well, it poured down. Well, yeah, I mean, I was. As I was walking home. Yeah. Oh, poor you. Didn't you have an umbrella? <gasps> you always take an umbrella. Why didn't you take an umbrella? Not that time. <sighs> Thing no, is, he I, did, did, I take my it, coat with my hood. If there's a 1% <sighs> chance of rain, he'll take an umbrella. I, he'll be going out the door and he'll go, is it going to rain today? Well, and we'll ask our certain thing in the corner if it's going to rain. I hold my hands up. I was wrong, Carl. And he'll I say, oh, wrong. there's a 2% chance of it raining. And Richard goes, I better take the umbrella. And I'm normally right. <laughs> I am normally right. <laughs> Apart Ooh. from when you're wrong and you get absolutely well, drenched. Yeah. Anywho, where's yeah. my book? Mm. Let's get on with the show, Paul. Mm. So, oh, that's what I wanted to mention. Yes, I had the most bizarre dream last night, Paul. Oh, yeah, I know. You told me all about it when we woke up this morning well, for about was, ten minutes. Well, you were interested. Was I? I turned my back to you and tried to go back to sleep. <laughs> Can you take that as a hint? Well, I mean, it didn't rile, rival my Tudor baby dream. <laughs> no, nothing will rival that. No, nothing no. will ever rival the Tudor baby dream. Yeah. In fact, I need to write the book, Tudor Baby, Tudor Dream. Baby Dream. Yeah. No, it could it be a whole series. A little bit it? weird, doesn't it? It's like a song, Tudor Baby Dream. Yeah, now that, that, that's taken me into that Sugar Baby Love. Well, yeah, that's it? the yeah. tune. Yeah, absolutely. No copyright infringement intended. Absolutely not. So let's get back to Liza Minnelli. I had a dream about Minnelli. Liza Minnelli. I was thinking of Vanilla. Liza Manili. <laughs> Vanilli Manili. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, bizarre dream. I dreamt that we were driving through a desert. I think it was in America because we don't have deserts here, do we? Not particularly. We have no. beaches and sand dunes. Um, we were driving through and there was this massive structure. It was like, it was like that place in 
galaxy quest, you know, that planet they go to with the little aliens, and she goes, oh, look, they're like little babies. Oh, and they're absolutely they're savages. Savage, evil yeah. things. Big boulders. Yeah, it was like that kind of landscape, a little bit like the Grand Canyon type of thing, big, very big. Grand Canyon is big, apparently. And uh, I'd like to go to the Grand Canyon, I would. Um, have you seen people have fallen in, getting too close to the edge? No. Yes! Taking photographs. Nearer! Further back! <laughs> Woo! I think if it was in the UK it would all be ring fenced off and you wouldn't be is. able to get within I about 100 yards. it probably yards. is, Paul. People oh, go right. over the barriers. Oh, right. They okay. do. I've seen it. Anyway, we're driving along and I said, oh, I'd like to go and visit that. So we pulled over at this, like, place that was sort of like a, I guess what you'd call a truck stop. I don't know what a truck well, we, stop is, but it's, it's like a place a, where trucks stop. a lay-by type thing with like a building, a cafe. I don't know where you get um, what do you get? What do you get? Apple pie and we ice went, cream. We went to the the monument. We were walking back, and you said to me, "I'm driving to the truck stop," and I thought, "Well, it's there, the truck stop." <laughs> But anyway, and I said, "Well, I'm going into this building, and this building turned out to be a recording studio." And I had to walk through loads of doors and it was kind of getting very 80s office building type thing with fluorescent lights, beiges, and I'm walking through these doors and then I walked into this like office and there was Liza Minnelli, but Liza Minnelli 40 years ago. Right. Sort of Pet Shop Boy era maybe, around right. that time. Right, yeah. 35, 40 years. And I said, oh, Liza. You look so young. And I remember thinking she's got really perky bosoms. <laughs> you know, pert. Young <laughs> and pert. Yeah, perky. That's what they mean. Yeah, perky. Pert. Yeah, pert, but perky. Yeah. In a sort of silky top. With a sort of, you know, 80s Liza Minnelli do. And she went, but I am young. I am young. I am young. I'm Liza. And, um, <laughs> and... She was really young looking, very, very young yeah, looking. I think we got and I that. remember thinking, I've gone back in time. There's a theme emerging from my dreams, time travel. Mm -hmm. And I remember I said to her, I've come from the future, Liza. And I can't believe how young you look. And she said, I know you're staring at me. <laughs> and I said, I need to let Paul know where I am. And I thought, how am I gonna do that if I'm 40 years in the past? Oh, Ooh. I'll use my Blackberry. Oh, yeah, you said about your... And I had a Blackberry. I remember that bit. I've never had a Blackberry. You had a Blackberry. I, I had didn't. I various Blackberries, yeah. And um, I, I was trying to text you, but it wouldn't... It was like when you used to have to do predictive text on an old-style phone. Mm. And I remember you saying to me, just type the word and it'll come up. Because I was going A, B, C, D... Uh, well, that's uh, not a word. No, you know what I'm saying. And I couldn't text you, and I was thinking, he's going to be worried, he's not going to know where I am. I'm 40 years in the past. And then it ended. And all along I was eating apple pie and ice cream in the truck no, stop. No, you weren't, because you weren't in my dream. I was in my dream. What, eating? <laughs> yes. So yeah, that was my bizarre Liza Minnelli time travel dream. Oh, that was lovely. Thank you for telling us, Richard. Well, I had to check whether Liza Minnelli was still alive this morning in case she died during the night, because that would have been weird. Oh, is she still alive? Yeah, she's 78. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. 78, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I did know that, but she's one of those people that you think must actually live such a full and active she's life. she's only 78. I know, you said that. I, I did hear that. I've got ears well. I can hear. Well, she's been in the wheelchair for a while. Oh, she's a bit like, um, what's it, um, you know, the actress that was in the wheelchair at the end, and the Michael Jackson, and, and um, what? Elizabeth Taylor. Oh. He's sort of, you yeah, know, lost mobility well, at the end she? of her life and things. But, uh, yeah. yeah, not that I'm saying Liza's at the end of her life. She could go on for, for another five minutes or five, well, not five decades, I suppose. No. Anyway, there we are. Yeah. Anywho, thank, thank you, you for enriching well, our lives I with your dream. You would have maybe. enjoyed that because the viewers enjoyed it. No, I think it was fascinating hearing it twice. I so, really Paul, did. what 
goodies are you coming up with to fascinate and enthrall us now? Well, on Saturday, we had a visit, didn't we? Did we? Yes. On Saturday? On Saturday. Sunday. Sunday. We had a visit. Enthralling, Paul. <laughs> we had a visit from uh, we Vanessa. We did. Um, Vanessa was doing a mosaic much. course with one of our local mosaicists who is really, she's an amazing mosaicist. And, um, I mean, top of the tree in, in the, the UK. And she does courses. So Vanessa was doing one because she's doing a mosaic at the Great Green Barn and she wanted to learn about how she was going to go about shading because this mosaic that she wants to do has a lot of shading in it. We are still recording, aren't we? Paul? Yeah. yeah. And um, once, when Vanessa had finished the course, which was Saturday, Sunday, she popped down here, literally down the road, like 200 yards down the road. It was happening at the community centre at the end of our road. Mm -hmm. Which you've heard Richard mentioning they used to have meetings for their work up there occasionally. Once a month, wasn't it? Management meetings or something. And uh, anyway, she came and we had tea and cake and... Um, we chatted for, I don't know, half an hour, three quarters of an hour, and she looked around the house because she'd never been here before, um, even though we'd known each other for so long. And, um, and then she had to go, but before she did, she and I went down to the allotment, so she had a look at the allotment. She loved the allotment and the site. She thought it was quite magical. Um, and the fact that we're on the River Brent and all of that, and she thought this area was absolutely wonderful because it is, we're very fortunate to have chosen to live and been able to live in this area because it really is lovely. You know, there's so much green, you know, considering we're a London postcode, there's so much environment around us, which is of, um, you know, wildlife and nature and, and rivers and canals. It's just lovely. Why on earth do we want to move, Paul? <clears throat> well, that's sort of interesting. I was thinking that whilst doing something at the plot yesterday. But anyway, because that's we for need another to pay thing. the mortgage off. That's for another thing. Um, and um, so, yes, that happened. And then last week I went down to For Her Sake in, in Shamley Green, which is where it's going to be. It opens on Wednesday reopens and new premises did a lot of work so it's been a really busy week for me getting a lot of new things done for for her sake because of course when you move from one premises to another there's a whole host of things that need to be updated um, and reapplied for in terms of sort of councils and you know licenses and things like that so it's been a, a really busy week and I'm glad actually that we've got this long bank holiday weekend in the UK to catch up not to relax but basically to catch up with quite a lot of Richard and Paul and Paul things that need to be done so yeah that was that was my week really yeah so that was that was good and then we also found a little bottle i know that how bizarre this little bottle turned up in the back garden i was out in the back garden i, I saw a football come over from our neighbors um from the boy who plays football in the back garden yeah. and we end up with like two or three balls you know a week in our garden and I so went out to, day to throw them back and when I went to pick one up, this little bottle, which was full of earth when I, I saw it, was just lying on top of the, the soil. So it's um, got a mark on the base, UG, which I've looked up, which is United Glass. It's not particularly old, but we, we're just dumbfounded as to where it came from. It's just such a cute bottle. It's like an... It's like a old style UK milk bottle but it's only about three inches tall. Um, I've, I've looked online it could have been a miniature but very yeah. often miniatures are screw caps. And it's not yes it's got a it's stopper. Not a, it's obviously. not a screw cap um, but yeah very interesting very sweet we, we will keep hold of that as a little memento. Yeah it's got B something a number yeah, on the base. B21 
Um, I've tried to find out, but I can't find any more than other than it's made by United Glass, that mm. we're a, a, a big manufacturer of bottles. It's fairly cheap. It's a sort of, it's got a seam. Oh, it's got a seam, yeah. So it's been moulded rather than blown. Yeah. You know? um, but we, there used to be a lot of laundries in this area because of the, the river and the canal, lots of flowing water. There used to be quite a lot of laundries and um, dye factories. I don't think this comes from a dye factory. I don't, I don't think it is, but they, they did used to have small bottles of dye. I found... I think it's too modern, though. It is. Far too modern. I think it's been thrown into the garden at some point by a neighbour, um, and it's just got buried, you know. But things do... In, in these old gardens, we're Victorian property... Mm. glass and pottery is constantly coming to the surface yeah. especially when you dig in um fresh compost yeah when um, you're working the soil the and thing, things work their way to the surface and then over winter you'll find stuff comes to the surface i mean we've mm. got a lot of gravel and pebbles in our garden a lot of rocks uh, which is good for drainage um but it's there's always bits and pieces. I found some clay pipe, like a you know mm. smoking pipe. I found perfume bottles, shards of pottery, um, loads of stuff over the years, you know. And sadly, a lot of plastic. Yeah. We're always finding old cat collars. Yeah. Small toys, things like that. Um, so yeah it is bizarre to think that that garden has been I mean it, when we moved in here there was a lot of lawn there was just small borders on either side where now there's a small lawn and big borders on either side and it's amazing to think that you primarily have been working those borders for 20 years now and you're still finding you know things like this are still coming to the surface it's quite bizarre yeah it is it's very odd how it all works. I mean, it could be that they, next door where the football is played, they had AstroTurf put down. Um, you know, I understand why, but, you know, it's no, plastic. No, I don't understand why. Um, well, no, I understand why. I don't, I don't accept. But anyway, it doesn't matter. But when that AstroTurf was put down, that, that had to be dug out, didn't it? The, the, the ground and levelled off and things put down. So maybe something was disturbed at that time and they put it on the side and it's just fallen into well, view. things were definitely thrown in different directions because I can see in their neighbour's garden down the side of where they had that fenced on, there's a load of cans and stuff. Oh, right, I haven't seen that. So they're builders, mm, yeah. Sound like a nice bunch. Yeah. And who Talking oh. of builders. Yeah. We are having work done on the house. We're having the heists painted, mm. the exterior of the house. It, it's in desperate need. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, scaffolding will be going up next Friday. Yeah, we've got a, a wall, particularly sort of behind you, the, the, north, the wall, facing north wall. North facing. And um, years and years ago, I, I, I wanted it painted um, because it was still the raw render from almost you know 170 years ago and um and it was absolutely fine no no leaks or anything you know but i i thought it would look much better white but unfortunately when the people did do it i don't think they sealed it properly and they didn't use enough coats or something and it's been peeling for quite a few years and we mentioned it a bit last year when we were we were looking at, at moving um, so anyway, a number of friends of ours in this area have had work done by this particular guy and uh, he has given us a quote which we've you know accepted and he's going to be starting work in about a week's time. So um, there'll be a lot of scaffold going up around our, our house. So. Yeah, but it'll look worse than it is because it's not as though there's a team of people working on no, the building. So. No. You know, it's not as though we've got six builders or anything like that. It's just one guy. Mm. Scaffold will go up and that will mean that they will require some access to neighbours. So Paul has spoken with neighbours about that. Um, because to, so yeah. because we, the, the side of our wall... Yeah. Um, backs onto their backs gardens. Backs literally onto their gardens. Yeah. 
uh, which that used to be a little orchard just next to us here um, and um, before they were those houses were built so that there needs to be a footprint for the scaffolding in their gardens so well in one person's garden and on another person's yeah, yeah. drive so yeah so there we are and with that of course for me because it's something which is really quite out of my comfort zone it, there is sort of anxiety around this which um sort of um say goodbye yeah. to it yeah no exactly Bye. but you know it's see it's, ya wouldn't want to be ya yeah it's That's very easy do. it's very Just easy do it. to do that but do actually it. you know do it's it. something that i have to work through do and anxiety it. individually you know is something that is different for for all of us no. so yeah can you go on no, i can go on actually yeah yeah exactly yeah so let's move on to the final segment of the show, which is what off white. We need to choose colours of paint. As I've well. chosen the colour. He's chosen the paint the is colour. in the the cupboard. Well, not all of it. We need to get yeah, more. Yeah, but the same, yeah. there, same colour. It's sorted. A very pale grey. No anxiety over that. So let's move on to the final segment of the show, which is what have we watched on television this week, Paul? Well, we watched the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race last night. We did. We did. This is UK versus the world. Yeah. And yeah. It's the first time we won't we've say watched. Who won. No, it's the first time we watched this what do you call it? Sort of offshoot of the you know, the 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 can't drag think. race. You have drag race, yeah, but the sort of worldwide, you know, editions that happen. <clears throat> UK versus the world, it's called. No, I know, but it's the first time we watched that that one because there are so many around the world. Calm down. And I really, I, I really did enjoy it, and I think for the first time, I did have my favourites in the final. When I won't say who they were, but I did have my favourites. But I would have been happy with any one of those winning um yeah i was very happy that the one who won did win good but yeah good yeah. lovely enjoyed it we watched a new series called passenger on itv that's itv in the uk yeah it's uh, av all available on itv hub in the uk itv x itv x called? yeah it's called itv x get now. it right oh yeah. god yeah so this is a mystery programme set in the north of England, so some mm. viewers may need subtitles. <laughs> and yeah, it was quite good. I think it's going to have another season because I'm not going to say too much, but there isn't a proper conclusion. So it's either got to continue or it leaves us hanging in the air. Yeah, um, but it, it's re I think it's one of the... I think it's one of the most... It's one of the f my favourite things that I've watched recently, I think, because there there's not a great number of name actors in it. I mean, there's some actors that we do know, but then they're not sort of huge or they're not huge star names, let's say. And it's really story driven, and the crafting of it and the photography is all really good. The acting is really tight. The writing is good. I think there's a little bit of fluid timelines on it, um, which I find on quite a few shows at the moment, there's fluid timelines. Sometimes they say something like, oh, well, you know, when this happened a couple of days ago, and you think, hang on, that actually, in your timeline, it only happened the day before. So, but yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. We started Three Body Problem on Netflix, which is a sort of... Um... Sci-fi. Yeah, sci-fi, philosophical, existential, science fiction type thing. Mm. Not really sure what's going on, um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it already. Yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I preferred Passenger, but I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah. There's a there's some a Chinese character and I'm really enjoying that storyline most. At it's the difficult to sort of quantify what's happening because we don't really know, um, but there's all sorts of threads to it. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we've also started Palm Royale on Apple uh, TV. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've only done episode one. 
which was a bit of a slow starter. I thought it was going to be a comedy, but it's slightly funny in places, but not laugh out loud. This is about a woman who aspires to be within a circle of women at the Palm Royale Club. She wants to be one of them. Um, and it's about how she attempts to break into that circle. Mm. And the Palm Royal Club is a club for rich people, basically. Yeah. The wealthy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm... With in, Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin's in it, Kirsten Wigg, um, Carol Burnett. Mm. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting. And by the time the first episode ended, I wanted to know more. So that's quite a good sign. However... During the first half of the first episode, there were plenty of moments where I thought, oh, I don't care. Mm. I could have quite easily have given up. So that, to me, is a production error. And by the, the end of the first episode, for me, I'd fallen asleep and woken up again and yeah. caught up. Yeah. <laughs> we watch The Usual Things, To The Manor Born. We continue watching that, which Love we continue it. to enjoy. And the thing that I noticed about To The Manor Born is how the conclusion of each episode is so matter-of-fact. It never really builds up to a moment. Mm. And actually, if you were to take away the end titles and the opening titles of the next episode, you could run them all as a film. Oh, yeah, you could, actually, yeah. Quite easily, because they don't, they don't build things up, they just deliver. Yeah. And that's it. And it's going to be cute, it's going to be funny, it's going to be charming. Um, so, yeah, interesting. So we continue that. We continue with Rosemary and Time, which does get a little bit samey when you watch them again. Yeah. I mean, um, we've watched them a few times. I'm not sure whether in, we're in the back end of season two or season three. I'm not sure how many seasons there were, but we're in the back end of certainly a season after season one. And... and yeah, it's feeling a little bit sort of as though they've shoehorned various things in. Um, I'm not a fan of the ones that take place in Spain and France as much as the ones that happen in the UK. Yeah. And yeah. also, her son, Laura's son, the actor... Who's the police ...plays one. Matthew. Mm. He, his acting is just really, really poor. It's as good as mine. Yeah. So that's it. Is that it? That's we not it for this else? week. I started watching Jason and the Argonauts oh, again yesterday. You? you know, which I've seen I don't know how many times, but I I I do like the beginning with all the, the gods and things and I yeah. saw a video about somebody who'd stuck the um, animated sequences through an AI Oh really? Um, an AI generator to improve them made a big difference. They should I'm remaster sure. that with AI. Yeah. Because they are the thing that... I mean, when you're a child, you're entranced by them. Oh, yeah, completely. But as you get a bit older, you think, God, that looks really crap. I know, but it's still, you know, it was, I mean, it it has was the masterful charm. of all those years ago. Um, yeah, and the, the amount of hours that it took to do it and all of that. Yeah, I get it. Um, but they could be really improved. Mm. for a new generation but not I don't think Jason and the Argonauts because I think it was a little bit earlier but there were some of that ilk that were being made which look a bit ropey and then you think oh you know okay they're this and then you think well actually they were making that at the same time as Star Wars was being made you know not Jason and the Argonauts but a few of the the like oh, films yeah. afterwards yeah uh, and Star it makes Wars, you realise how Star Wars really did standard. jump things forward yeah um, well, they created new technology yeah, to do what they needed to do. Yeah. You know. In fact, we were talking about this the other day, weren't we? We were talking about how we feel that they're, not, not in terms of AI, but in terms of quite a lot of technology, there needs to be a leap forward. We, we seem to have sort of, things are being, you know, in terms of medical things, there's been advances and all of that, but... There doesn't seem to be a leap forward at the at the rate that we've seen things happening. There needs to be new, cleaner technology in general, mm. in terms of energy, in terms of batteries. We need lighter batteries, you know, especially for cars. 
there, there needs to be a move forward. There needs mm. to be new discoveries and investment in new discoveries to, to move things on into a cleaner, more efficient way of working. Yeah. You know, in many, many ways. Because we were talking particularly about batteries, weren't we? That's mm. where it started. And the lithium's going to lithium, run out. You know, how lithium is is going to run out and of course it needs to be extracted from old batteries and, and how all of that. you can guarantee that people are still holding on to old technology filled with all these precious metals yeah um there's probably many recycling centers not doing a proper job oh absolutely you know so there's so many things that need to be improved in society but there are now i, I was listening to i think it was you and yours and they were talking about uh, batteries and car batteries the other day and they were sort of saying there are other um, solutions to to just using lithium but they're not actually there's small companies developing it but none of the big companies are going in and investing in it because of course they've invested so many millions in the the sort of old new technology yeah. and new who we could talk for hours but we're yeah. not going to no no because the battery will run out. Oh, right, there we are. Oh, and... And Alexa's telling us it's time to stop. So, thank you, bloody thank you. Have a lovely, lovely Easter. I'm having a, a course of treatment this Easter. I've not told anybody. <laughs> Where this is going. I'm having a course of CRT this Easter. CRT. Uh, yeah. Chocolate replacement therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Wish oh, me luck. Dear. Wish oh, me luck. dearie me. Yeah, there we are. He's going to be stuffing it in his mouth. Yeah, yeah. whenever I yeah. can. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So take care to the people of Wa. Have a great time. Have a lovely break. If you're having a break, if you're working, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Genuinely. Not really. <laughs> I'm glad we're not working. I'm glad we're... Well, we are sort of working. Well, we are working. Yeah, we are this working. Is this yeah, is work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anywho, bye for now. Thank you. Take care. Be good to yourselves. Don't be so sensitive. Yeah, exactly. And bananas. <laughs> bananas, tits and bums. <gasps> there we are. Bye. Bye.